In just 10 minutes, unlock 10 shocking takeaways from Andrew Huberman's talk with animal emotions expert, Dr. Carolina Vestland. Discover why dogs are not trying to dominate you. How to read pet body language and what your cat really wants. Learn science-backed tips to boost pet well-being, fix common training myths, and build a deeper, more honest bond with your animals. Takeaway one, how to really improve pet well-being? Dr. Carolina Vestland explains that true pet well-being goes beyond feeding and loving them. It is about meeting their deep biological and emotional needs. Dogs, cats, and even birds still carry strong instincts from their wild ancestors, even if they have lived with humans for thousands of years. Activities that allow pets to express their natural behavior, like sniffing, chasing, or scratching, should be part of daily life. Mental stimulation is as important as physical exercise. Pets need to explore, solve problems, and discover new things. Giving them quiet spaces where they can retreat is just as important as providing toys and cuddles. A pet that cannot act on its instincts often shows stress through chewing furniture, barking excessively, or behaving aggressively. For example, letting a dog sniff around during a walk, instead of forcing it to heal the whole time, allows it to engage its brain and feel more satisfied. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway two, how to read your dog and cat better. Pets mainly use body language to talk to us and to each other. Learning their silent language can prevent many problems. A dog wagging its tail more to the right side is usually happy, but if the tail leans more to the left, it could mean stress or fear. When a cat rubs its face or body against you, it is not just showing love. It is marking you with scent to say you are part of its safe group. Dogs prefer slow, gentle strokes rather than fast, hard pats, which can make them nervous. Cats show their mood partly through which eye they use to look at something. A left eye stare can mean fear, while a right eye focus often shows curiosity or liking. We often misunderstand facial expressions in dogs because their muscle movements are different from human smiles or frowns. For example, a dog that looks guilty after doing something wrong is usually just reacting to your angry body language, not feeling true guilt like a human would. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway three, build trust by respecting animal boundaries. Respecting an animal's choice to accept or reject contact builds strong bonds and prevents fear. Dogs and cats often see sudden hugging, patting, or grabbing as threatening, not loving. Always give your pet a choice. Offer a hand or a slow pet and see if they come closer or move away. Staying calm and soft yourself is key because pets can pick up even slight changes in human emotions. Overhandling small animals like cats, birds, or rabbits can make them associate touch with stress. Consent-based interaction creates more trust and reduces the chance of defensive biting or scratching. For example, many cats prefer being scratched gently under the chin or behind the ears instead of being picked up or squeezed tight. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway four, dominance myths about pets are mostly wrong. The old idea that dogs or cats try to dominate humans is based on misunderstandings of animal behavior. In nature, dominance is mainly about peaceful access to food, shelter, or mates, not controlling others aggressively. When a dog pulls ahead on a walk, it is often just excited, not trying to dominate you. When dogs jump up, they are usually showing excitement or seeking attention, not asserting power. Good training is about communication, teaching, and setting up situations where the animal makes the right choice. Harsh punishments based on dominance theories can actually create fear and aggression. For example, making a dog submit by rolling it onto its back can increase anxiety rather than teach respect or obedience. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway five, most human ideas about animals are wrong. Humans love their pets, but often completely misunderstand their feelings and motivations. Animals feel emotions, but their emotions are wired through species-specific instincts, not human-style thoughts. Popular ideas like cats give you gifts when they bring home dead animals are myths. They are usually bringing prey back to a safe spot. Dogs do not feel human guilt. They react to your anger with submissive body language because of fear, not regret. Animals have facial expressions, but they move different muscles than humans do, which often causes misreading. Living closely with animals teaches humans to read body movements more accurately than facial expressions. For example, a dog lying belly up may not always be asking for a belly rub. It might be showing submission or fear if its body is stiff and tense. We're halfway through the video. Thanks for sticking with us. 
If you're enjoying it, hit the thumbs up and share it in your WhatsApp groups. If you'd like to support us, please tap the thanks button below. It helps us keep making great content. Drop a comment and don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Now let's continue with the video. Takeaway six, the real emotional needs of pets. To truly thrive, pets need emotional safety, positive social experiences, and freedom to act on their instincts. Feeling safe is the most basic need for any animal. Without safety, nothing else works properly. Opportunities for play, exploration, foraging, and calm social contact create rich emotional lives. Pets should experience a mix of high energy moments like playing fetch and quiet time like snuggling calmly. Using punishment or constantly restricting behaviors can crush curiosity and cause depression. Encouraging positive behaviors like gentle sniffing, slow greeting rituals, and problem-solving games helps pets stay happy and balanced. For example, hiding treats inside puzzle toys or in cardboard boxes lets dogs and cats use their hunting instincts in a safe, fun way. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway seven, why early life experiences matter a lot? A pet's emotional resilience is often shaped by what happens in the first weeks or months of life. Puppies and kittens need enough time with their mothers and siblings to learn healthy social behavior. Handling young animals daily between two to eight weeks of age makes them much friendlier and more adaptable adults. Early weaning can cause attachment problems, anxiety, and reactivity later in life. Poor socialization during the early sensitive period is very hard to fix later, even with lots of love. Rescue animals with unknown or poor early care often need extra patience, structure, and emotional support. For example, a dog adopted after being neglected early in life may always be shy around new people, even if it loves its owners deeply. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway eight, how breed differences change pet needs. Different breeds of dogs and cats have different inborn behaviors that need to be honored, not ignored. Many dog breeds were designed by humans to highlight specific parts of the hunting sequence, like stalking or killing. For example, pointers were bred to freeze and point at prey without attacking, while terriers were bred to quickly kill small animals. Border collies are obsessed with controlling movement and need mental challenges, not just long walks. Scent hounds will never be fully satisfied without lots of chances to sniff and explore new smells. Lap dogs and toy breeds often just want close social contact and cozy routines, not intensive exercise. For example, a bloodhound deprived of sniffing opportunities will often invent problems like obsessive digging or escape attempts. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway nine, the hard truths about zoos and captivity. Modern zoos claim to focus on conservation, but captivity remains deeply unnatural for many animals. Old zoos were little more than prisons for exotic animals, and many still carry that legacy today. Even modern zoos often cannot meet the needs of wide-ranging animals like polar bears or big cats. Captivity can cause abnormal behaviors like pacing, self-harm, or aggression due to frustration and boredom. Tragic incidents like the San Francisco tiger killing reveal how little control zoos sometimes have over wild instincts. Animals like Tatiana the tiger showed memory, emotional targeting, and calculated behavior, not mindless aggression. For example, Tatiana bypassed other visitors and attacked only the teens who had harassed her, showing clear memory and purpose. Now let's move to the last takeaway. Takeaway 10, why respecting animal emotions matters? Respecting animals as sentient beings with emotional needs is essential, not optional. Animals do not exist just for our entertainment or comfort. They have their own needs and desires. Creating lives filled with exploration, safety, companionship, and challenges is the real path to ethical pet ownership. Animals experience emotional highs and lows, boredom, joy, fear, and even grief. Allowing them to express natural behaviors helps prevent frustration, depression, and aggressive outbursts. Caring for their mental health is as important as feeding them or giving them a place to sleep. For example, parrots that are deprived of social contact and mental stimulation will often start plucking out their feathers in distress, sometimes to the point of serious injury. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, hit the thanks button below. It really helps us keep going. If you enjoyed this summary, please leave a like and share it in your WhatsApp groups. To join discussion about this video, drop a comment below. And for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below.